Yay, well, um, welcome everyone to Bridge the Ballot Virtual Art Talk. And um, we made it another day on planet Earth. And I, you know, how I figured out, like, I've had some people ask me, well, did you select the artist for each talk? Like, and I'm like, no, I did it ram randomly. You know, like I put the names all in one spot and sort of like picked it that way. And um, I think what's interesting about this discussion tonight is you've got three educators here. <laughs> We're ending this talk with the educators in, in this discussion. And so I think, um, especially with what's going on and the pandemic, it's going to be an interesting discussion. So be ready to be hopefully educated or given a different perspective. Um, so tonight we have the fabulous Rebecca Garcia Gonzalez and Tatiana Ortiz. I mean, rock stars. And um, when I think about how this started, how did this whole, <laughs> I mean, I think I asked you, I was trying to think, when did I ask you to participate in this? Was this in March? Very right? Early. Yeah, very early. Mm -hmm. February, so, March, yeah. And nothing really happened in February and March, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as we all know, the pandemic happened, and so it was supposed to be on site and some of the works, um, you know, like Rebecca has some on site, but then it moved online too. And so we've had the first talk, the second talk, the third talk. I've made these beautiful videos. Look at all this great art. I'm gonna keep promoting you forever, right? <laughs> I'm gonna keep going. I'm, I'm always gonna be saying how wonderful the artists are here in Richmond. And so when we get done with this discussion, I will post it online too with that. But as I started each talk, we gotta, we gotta thank our partners. We gotta thank Bridge Art Storage. We have to thank the East Bay Express. As my new position as the Arts and Culture um, Managing Director of the Commission of Contra Costa County, I've done a lot of research with this spreadsheet of different organizations and we want to keep organizations in business and thank them because without partners I think the theme that we've seen through these talks is that Richmond Main Street the Richmond Arts and Culture Commission all these other things like Richmond Arts Center all these places are so important for us artists to continue going and then also oh has this been a common theme Freedom of the Press, East Bay Express, we have to, you know, always thank our partners that talk about the arts and support the arts. I think I'm preaching in the choir. So why this exhibit, artist introductions, you know, I, I've discussed why this exhibit, I think each week seems like a year in the timeline of everything political. Like, I, you know, I, I feel like maybe this was 10 years in a year, but right now I think, are we, 19 days away from voting? Is it 19 or 18 days, I think? You know, it's changing and it's ebbing and flowing and it really comes down to artists like Rebecca and Tatiana and we need a platform to amplify your voice. So I'm just gonna go right into it because I want Tatiana to share her br brilliance with us. And if you could just give us a little background on who you are. Yeah, well, um, Jenny knows I don't really like talking about myself. I leave that to her, but um, I think it just starts back from when I met Jenny. Um, like, I believe it was, yeah, 2015, 2016. I walked into um, the Richmond Art and Commission meeting. Um, I had met Marianne at a, another you know, neighborhood event. And she was telling me like, we need artists, we have money for artists. And I heard money for artists. <laughs> I'm like, I need to go there. I need to go where was she's talking about. And um, I ended up at that meeting. I was petrified. Um, I had no idea what I was going to do. I was really, really nervous. And um, I was really intimidated. I mean, there was such amazing artists, but as I stayed longer I really wanted to leave but I just I was assured to just stay just stay I remember Michelle saying just sit and listen and I'm like okay and um I realized that there is a space for everyone that this isn't a competition there is um 
that there's a space for young artists, older, I mean, mature, anybody, there's a space for it. Um, and then there was funds for it. And that's when I was just like, oh, okay. Um, but even then I still didn't know what I wanted to do, but I had, I had just wrote a children's book and that was just, again, I wasn't really promoting it. It was just, you know, something, you know, that I did um, for my daughters and, and I shared it with local schools and, and that's kind of where I left it. Um, but then I realized, well, what if I do that with children? What if that's, maybe that will be my project. And I had spoken to Jenny about it and Michelle and they were like, yeah, do that. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. <laughs> and uh, they, I mean, the whole, the whole team, the whole art commission that you guys all entrusted me with that and, and that project and you were my liaison and you helped me along the way and, and just encouraged me to keep pursuing what it was that I wanted to do. And, um, and now I'm teaching at the Richmond Art Center with Rebecca. Um, I actually just got hired on at the Richmond Museum. Uh, yeah, so I'm doing that now. And I work at Contra Costa College. Um, I teach third graders under the Methus program. So yeah, those are the, that's just, that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because of course I found this photo and I'm like, 2015, that's like 20 years ago. <laughs> Right, I'm like, oh my gosh, how long ago was that? Oh right? uh, yeah. Um, and this project you did, and um, how you know when it goes into sort of the background of education and the funds that are missing in education, and how this project really filled a void. Right? Did you do you mm -hmm. sort of sense that? Like, was that part of the inspiration behind it? For sure. Yeah. Um, I I actually grew up doing this uh, really similar project when I was in second grade. And it was actually geared towards students that had trouble reading and writing. And at the time, I didn't know it. I, I didn't know I had that problem. <laughs> but my teacher was so gracious about it and um, so kind. And, um, and she created this sort of thing where we made our own books. And you know she would check our spelling and help us edit it. And it was a lot of fun we threw a little party and we our books got to be in the school library and it was just a lot of fun and i wanted to bring that same sort of like nostalgic feeling that i had but i wanted to bring it back um and just to a larger scale and uh, it was it's a lot of fun and i'm still doing it so um yeah i really enjoyed it you know i and then of course i found this your facebook page the, oh the <laughs> yes yeah. of this yeah Yes, and if you want to just sort of share how, what happened during Yeah, that. yeah, so it was a 10-week uh, project, um, and like I said, we're still doing it, and now I'm, this is my first year doing it over Zoom, so that's going to be interesting. <laughs> my first meeting's next week, but yeah, the process is we would come in, uh, we would connect with a local school or organization that uh, teaches youth, and from there we... Um, we do brainstorming with them. We would do games and, 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 and we would do it in a way that, uh, that didn't seem like it was uh, really focused on the academics. We wanted to make it fun. Um, so now we, we actually, we start doing puppets with them and we teach them how to story tell. And so they create a puppet, they, they create a story for the puppet and, um, and that's really them brainstorming and they don't really realize it until we say, you just brainstorm. And so <laughs> that's a lot of fun. And um, I actually, um, I have my sisters, they do it along with me. And so uh, there's three of us that do it together. And so that's been nice that we, we've been doing it for these five, six years now. Um, but yeah, we, we, then we kind of separate them in groups where we find their strengths and their weaknesses and we pair them up. Uh, with different students that we think would they would benefit from and then they work on their illustrating and then writing and then it just kind of really organically comes together and they get a beautiful book at the end of it they do and that's why I have to share right <laughs> and this is you know sort of what I touched on at the beginning that you know I remember it right near the BART station, your art and windows, because of Richmond Main Street, that exhibit, and just the look on, I don't know if you want to share, but like, I remember the youth coming in and seeing their work, and the whole family came in, and they yeah. took this huge picture, it was like a family affair, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, that was a lot of fun, this was actually, um, 
this was a second piece to it. Um, this came just kind of out of nowhere. It fell in my lap about, we heard you, you know, created children's art and we want to display it. We have this space. And uh, that was with Richmond Main Street. And I was like, okay. <laughs> but I had to, you know, I had to talk to the parents about, you know, showcasing their, ch their the children's art and they loved it and they came and that was a lot of fun. That was like a second reception and that it was just another way to celebrate their art. And so I got to help create, uh, curate that one. And that was a lot of fun. Yeah, it really was. When I think of Tatiana, I think of like a family affair with a large family, but your students and that's, you know, really amazing work you do. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for entrusting me. <laughs> oh, <definitely. laughs> and Rebecca, can you please share with us your brilliance? You mean my background? Yes. <laughs> I was so excited to learn that Tatiana loved the whole language because that's how I was trained as a teacher. I was training, trained to teach with whole language and I was part of the Bay Area Writing Project and um, worked a lot in schools teaching uh, literacy and teaching kids to write their own books. I have some of my favorites still. Uh, stored away. So I'm, I'm very happy to see that because for a while there was a war against whole language and an emphasis on phonics and I thought they were going to kill that uh, beautiful idea of writing your own book and getting excited about uh, children's literature and writing your own poems and stories. That can never go away, Tatiana. So I am super happy to see that. And I remember when you did your presentation in front of the Art Commission, and I remember, oh, I have to remember that. <laughs> so um, I didn't think she was so, nervous at all. I mean, I didn't even, that's new. No. <laughs> I felt, it felt very nervous. I remember my palms were sweaty. <laughs> I think, yeah, maybe I might have noticed that, but I, I just remember what a great project that was. And I think that year I was with the Art Center still as uh, director of art in the community. And so I wasn't um, doing projects myself. I was hiring teaching artists to do projects with the community. And there were a lot of fantastic people that I worked with. But um, my background actually is in printmaking. I went to the University of Puerto Rico and the Art Students League of San Juan, and I did. Um, uh, some training in printmaking because that's the tradition over there. So then I took some painting classes, but I wasn't really into abstraction at the time. And um, I was a little turned off by that. And it wasn't until I came here to California that I really got into it. And it may have helped that I didn't really know where to go do printmaking. Mm. So, <laughs> so it really helped when um, I was able to have my own space and that took some time but like at around 2005 I started creating a dedicated space in our house for art making and that's when I decided that I had to come back to art making. So then I came to Richmond and I met this amazing community of artists. I remember meeting John Whirl, Whirly and explaining, oh, I'm, I'm just a person who's returning to art. I don't have a portfolio. I don't have anything to show you. I got to show a visual. Sorry, when you said that, <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> and he, he was so encouraging and so were other people. Gerard Gutierrez used to come to the same uh, figure drawing classes. And that was a great community, by the way. So little by little, I connected with other artists through all these different um, ways that we had of getting together, not just going to artist talks and shows, but also drawing together, um, painting together. And that's what I remember the most of um, when I first came to live in Richmond and I was getting to know everybody. I learned about the art commission, but I didn't really have the nerve to write a proposal until I was already working with the Richmond Art Center and had to do it so that people could do projects. 
So I guess what we're showing here is one of the murals I've done. This one is in um, Unity Park. And over time, I've never really thought I'm a super great muralist, but um, my claim to fame is that I like to work with, I see, <laughs> I see Jenny shaking her I'm head. like, come on now. <laughs> but seriously, because I never trained for um, painting murals. And in fact, sometimes I laugh at myself because I treat them like giant canvases in that I approximate the, so I make mistakes, I fix them. And I keep doing that until it happens, but it, it's a very large area to work with. So um, my claim to fame is that I meet with organizations and I work with their youth. Since I'm a teacher, that's not a stretch. And they participate quite a bit in designing the mural. We have discussions, many discussions sometimes, and they keep seeing drawings and designs and talking about them until they come up with the final one. Mm -hmm. So this one that you see here is exactly that. And the story I have about this is that they gave me a list of 32 plants and animals that had to be in this mural. And I thought I was going to have a heart attack. But then I said, well, how about if we negotiated? So we did, and we came up with this. And I'm very proud to say they painted on this mural until the very final stages. Some people did parts of the animals, definitely the plants and trees. Just on, And what this is, is um, the rain gardens that clean the runoff water all along the greenway. So um, they wanted to show how that works. They wanted it to be like a didactic piece that anyone could stand in front of and say, this is what we're doing for the greenway and this is how it works. So um, that's the kind of work that I like to do nowadays. Just keep working with youth. And I got and, this on just in time. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Because you, these are the most recent ones and they were done in exactly the same way. So, but what the difference is, is that these are post COVID murals. And mm. so uh, there were two very different discussions in the small one uh, with the people at a barbecue they decided that uh, people shouldn't have masks in this one because people had to see the emotions, the relaxation, the happiness, the joy in what they were doing. And in the other mural, there will be masks. This one is at Pullman mural. And the youth told me it's because that's reality. Some people wear them, some people don't. So see the kind of conversations that you can have around art making and just for them to see that their idea can go in a mural is a super empowering thing. The only thing that I noticed was different is that they are so tired of Zoom that when they would come to the park and paint in a socially distanced way, they were super goofy because they hadn't seen each other. But Yes, yeah, so that's how I combine my background with my training as an artist to come up with some form of art making that would be more of an integration. And it's what makes me the happiest, more than painting on canvas. So, well, speaking of canvas, right? You've done this project and um, I think that's what we've, I love hearing your story about your reluctance, you know, of writing these proposals, but now I think you're like one of Richmond's experts on it, you know, like it comes natural to you and you've done this project right here. If you want to speak to this one. Well, I want to say that I always loved the work that Michelle Seville did with the training for the NPA grants, because I know there were very many people that, first of all, many people that were new to it would come, which is already a success. And the second thing is they got a lot of training on how to do the proposal process. And so I want to I wanna mention her because I thought she was doing fantastic with that. And it gave me joy to walk into that room and see so many younger people uh, writing their first proposal. So my friend Carmen Melendez, I think she is, no, she is not in these pictures, but 
um, I worked with her. Carmen is Afro-Boricua and I'm Boricua. And together we thought of this artist project that the Richmond Art Center uh, uh, gave us the opportunity to complete. Mm -hmm. And it was gonna be a super large banner that would say in Spanish, Black Lives Matter, but we translated it in a way that leaves no doubt as to what it is about. And so the translation reads something like, Black lives are worth exactly the same as yours and mine. And it's a mouthful for a banner, but um, everybody that spoke Spanish would read it and go, oh, okay. So they would, they would get the idea. And we made smaller banners. The one that says stop killing us was going to be the children's banner, but no children came that day. So the adults ended up creating that one. I love how the background design. And um, we made another one that simply said Black Lives Matter. But um, it was a day when people came and it was early in the summer. I think it was June. So Everybody was a little apprehensive, but we took everybody's temperature. And as you see, we left some space and it worked just fine with a very good number of people. Um, and at the end, we took photos. The banner is meant to be displayed on 23rd Street. Mm -hmm. So the next march that I see coming out of Richmond High School, I will um, either lend them the banner or we'll come and unfurl it. And the vision was to bring all um, Latino and African American and uh, Afro Latino people together to make it. So uh, I'm happy to say that happened. Um, so very happy about that one. The other, um, what what you told me, I think your what you said is your best known work is your portraits and. Um, you, you know, as long as I've known you, you've been doing these portrait portraits. And if you want to just share the background of these two. Well, um, I went to Puerto Rico with, um, I uh, did a Kickstarter project and um, that financed my trip to Puerto Rico for six weeks. And in that trip, I painted 16 portraits of people from all walks of life, young and old, rich and poor, transgender, gender neutral, um, gay, lesbian, straight, um, activists, apolitical people. And they came to me by recommendation from other people and I screen, screened them over text. And so uh, many of these folks I had not met. Um, the woman to the, uh, the, the woman on the hammock is a very well-known writer who mm -hmm. moved to Puerto Rico. And um, she's wearing, um, I, oh my God, I forgot the name of it, but it's a shawl that you wear in religious practices for Jewish folk, which she is. She is Jewish Puerto Rican. People don't know there is a community there that came a long time ago. So she was explaining all of this to me as we did the portrait. All these people post live. They chose their clothes. They chose their poses. And then we talked nonstop for four hours until the portrait was done so that they would stay awake. I learned that very quickly that you have to have a conversation and <laughs> yeah. <people> fall asleep. <laughs> so I'm glad that you chose these because um, the uh, man next to her is a Puerto Rican that's lived here for a long time. So when I came from Puerto Rico, I painted portraits of the Boricuas living here in the mm -hmm. Bay Area. And this one was a volunteer, another person I had not met, and he wanted to pose with his drum. Uh, but he is a very well-known activist, and I just was very touched to see the flag just hung in his living room the way that you see it. So here what you see is the bottom of it. I went into people's homes and I, um, I got the opportunity of, of learning about their lives in a way that I wouldn't have had if I had taken a photo. So, um, well, thank you for sharing this. I mean, I, I think 
um, both with you and Tatiana, the backgrounds with education and the art practices, you can see that in the work um, and the thoughtfulness in the work. Um, I, I think I share that with you too, uh, just randomly. And I'm not gonna go into a big thing about my art practice, but um, part of who I am is multidisciplinary, but also multifaceted in all our backgrounds. Like I think of Tatiana as an educator, an advocate and an artist, and the same for you too, Rebecca. We see that in your art practice and who you are. Um, but I think the three things that I think the things that we have in common as artists is that we learn we take risks in our work, right? And even if that's a risk of saying a proposal when you're nervous, educating you know through a class, even bringing up topics that are not going to be pretty painting pictures, right? I think if we look at a common thread in which our work has a common cohesiveness and concept to it, I would say that. But I really would like to dig into the questions of the night, like what is your concept behind your works and what is your connection to Richmond? And I think, I think some of you have already touched on that already, but I think another question is, how does our art highlight current events and address social issues? <laughs> you know, um, I got into discussion with somebody about this and they're like, well, I just don't really, you know, I want to relax when I look at work, you know, and I'm like, well, you know, sometimes work, art tells the truth of the world and what's going on. And I think a big thing to sort of close on is how can artists be supported now into the future? Because in my new position, I'm really noticing that um, the need, the need for arts right now, the need for grants, the need for programs throughout the county, and how can we garner that support moving forward? So look at this, Rebecca. I did my homework. You did, <laughs> didn't you? You did, I all did our homework. I, I really can't, you, I don't know, I can't improvise with such a big question like that, mm. but, um, I did write some a very like one sentence. Um, the idea behind a lot of my work is to get the viewer to question their assumptions about people, places, and situations that are important to me as a Latina and as a queer artist. So I'm forever poking with but um, I also um, subscribe to this idea that political art comes in three flavors and I've uh, tried all three. I've tried portrayal, which is to show things as I think they are. I've tried promotion, which is showing the resolution of those problems. And I've tried projection, which is kind of answering visually the what if question. And this framework comes from an artist named Kimin Okroin. I had to learn his pronunciation. And I've always liked that way of looking at it <clears throat> because it's really, um, well, trying to be creative with concepts that are sometimes really tired, you know, like our present political situation, you see a lot of people saying, don't talk to me about that, but maybe you can show them something that will make them think. I completely agree. And I, um, this is your works right now at Bridge Space. Um, and that was an interesting decision too, because you know not all the artists felt comfortable putting the works in the space due to the pandemic, right? Because that sort of changed um, even as I'm curating and helping with some other projects right now, you know, I've had to address that and say, you can invite artists to submit something in a physical space, but it doesn't mean that they're going to want to do that with COVID and that practice. But you definitely shared, you know, I'm appreciative of you sharing that, but also respective of all different artists' backgrounds on this. How did you feel like putting your work up during the pandemic? It was feedback from my social media. 
I have no idea what how people are going to feel about the work that I do, but I learn a lot from reading what they write on social media and they kept asking, so where can I go see it? Where can I go see it? Um, and that's what made me decide it. It was really, really simple. And uh, fortunately, the paintings aren't that big. So I also thought, how hard is this going to be? But they made it really easy at Bridge. So thank, thankful for that. So Tatiana, if you can speak to your... Can you hear me okay? I can hear you perfectly. Okay. Yeah, so the idea behind um, these were, um, well, first, I, I work in polymer clay, so that's where um, I, I, I typically make really just kind of fun, silly, goofy pins that people buy and, you know, just kind of toss it away and buy a new one. It's just kind of um, just really fun and, and nothing too serious. But I, ha I remember I had got the message from you about I'm putting on a show and, I, and I'm thinking like, okay, why not, you know, why not just make what I'm already making and turn it into something like this? But um, that, like I said, it was before the pandemic when I made these and um, I, I was really just going back and kind of remembering uh, where the whole voting thing came to me or how I even knew about it. And it wasn't at school. It wasn't anything like that. I remember my dad coming home and he had a sticker on and it had a vote sticker. And I was like, oh, I want one. Like, where'd you get that from? <laughs> And he was like, I voted. And I still was like, well, I don't get it. Like, what does that mean? And so he, he, he always watches the news. Uh, you know, that was his thing. And always would watch the, the, the presidential debates and things like that. Still wasn't of interest to me. I wanted that sticker. I was like, well, how do you get that? You know? And he's just like, it's because I did this, you know? And he's trying to explain it to me. And I'm like, oh, okay. And whatever. <laughs> and so we just went on about my day. But um, you know, as I'm older now, I still recognize that people still want that sticker. And um, it's kind of like, look what I did, you know, and so it, it's just, you can recognize they did something, you know, important. But I started kind of thinking of the, of the person that, what if they can't do that? You know, what, what about those people that are here that can't vote, that, that don't have that uh, right yet? And so that's where I started creating you know, different little sayings under it. And then, um, or just the people that flat out didn't vote. And, um, you know, like I said, I don't know, it, it, it didn't have to do with their reasoning. It was just like, I just want to create something like interesting, you know, kind of thought provoking of, um, if you could get in the, in the head of everybody, what it really meant. Um, or like the one I wanted to vote. It was like, ah, I didn't get around to it, but I wanted to, or I don't even know why I'm voting. I'm just doing it. You know, I just wanted the sticker. So um, a lot, especially in social media and um, a lot of people, you know, the younger crowds, uh, it, it, to me, it almost looked like a popularity, you know, like, look what I did. And so I always wondered, well, do they really know like what they're voting for? So it was just really just getting in the head of people. That's really what it was about. It's really great. And I love that they're sort of the small, they're small. <laughs> they're very small. <laughs> and they really hold a punch to it. Like, like, what does it say? I wanted to vote. I didn't vote. Voted for something. Mm -hmm. Maybe someday you'll see this large scale blown up as a mural. Woo! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're, they're really small. They're about as big as your thumb. Yeah, they're pretty small. I think this amazing concept does merit other venues for sure. Mm -hmm too like I could just see it large scale. Mm -hmm. yeah okay. and I, I I originally um back when we were posting pictures up you know to submit to the bridge I had I had each pin with kind of like a, a clothing that I thought would connect with the pin and so the the one that says voted I actually had found one of my dad's old jackets and I I put it on there and I, I did a photograph with that one because that was the connection. It was, I remember him wearing that sticker. And then other ones, I just kind of, I found like, you know, uh, like hipster clothing and I, I, you know, I tied it in with, I wanted to vote, you know, just kind of that sort of thing. I love it. 
oh, did I find something else about Tatiana? <laughs> <laughs> well, we Rebecca and Tatiana they're like no Jenny was looking <laughs> on the internet <laughs> but when I think of um, just your connection to Richmond and um, I remember the Richmond Standard doing this article about you um, and how that you know that one grant really I feel like launched your career and how you are definitely a important artist and community member in Richmond. And so um, you're, you're, I wanted to also sort of acknowledge how, you know, I didn't grow up in a big, big family. So when I met your family, I was like, I want to become part of that family. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to adopt, you're going to adopt me, right? <laughs> but how important that is with you and you brought your children and I, and I can see that in your work. Yeah, I think growing up in such a large family, um, it is hard to find your your, um, your gifts and your talents because we all kind of just connect to one another very, you know, easily. Um, but as, you know, as we've grown up, we still, we've all found our paths, but we still bring each other along for the ride. So that's awesome. <laughs> well, so... Um couple of works um, that I've got here in I don't think I have to really get into what my concept is with my work I think it's pretty obvious danger America <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah uh, and um, that's why I'm gonna go on to you know how does art highlight current events and address social issues and when I saw this piece that Rebecca created and just the different players in it and how these players keep on changing weekly mm -hmm. and how this really marks a moment of time in history at this inflection point. And I'm sort of curious your process behind this when you come up with an idea and then you create, create it on canvas. I work digitally with an iPad for ideas. And um, this was going to be a series. And actually, I, there's, I created maybe 10 or 12 of these. But not all of them made it to paintings. Part of it was that you said there was going to be a show. So they started going, oh, no, I have to put it on canvas. <laughs> so um, I picked this one because exactly because of this Jenny that you so well described earlier the characters keep changing but the the drama is the same the corruption of an entire government and at the service of the most vile ideas and I thought what could be most repulsive to show and I uh, I saw this painting by chance by William Waterhouse that shows an emperor that's not interested in governing. But in this case, he's looking at pigeons. And in my painting, I decided to just push everything to the brink. Turns out this painting wasn't so popular with some Democrats because Obama is on a platter, as is Pelosi. Mm -hmm. but, um, but overall, I think it resonated with people and um, I once I did the digital version very little changed because I had already promised you this is what would go to the show but if I was doing it today I would certainly change none of these characters are inventions they're all part of the original painting and that little person is you and me that Trump is devouring. <laughs> Some people have asked me, so that's the answer. And interestingly, the people in robes in the back are all the Facebook, Twitter, and which now, again, they're in the news. So, um, yeah, this is unusual. This is, this is one of those where I ask myself, what's most repulsive about this government and how can I show it? And I came up with this and other things. 
Yeah, you really, um, I think that's one of your strengths is the narrative that you develop. And I've never taken one of your classes, but I've always imagined if I took a class with Rebecca, I bet the narrative and the, and the syllabus would be really great. <laughs> Intermediate painting is where people get to do this. Yeah, some, uh, we had some great, some, I have some brilliant students that did um, pieces that were really exciting and uh, I would say fantastic compared to, to this little painting here. Um, so yes, people can do it when you just start drawing and I don't think technique is as important as the strength of your concept. So I always say that because you have to honor people's ideas. People have to believe in them for a painting or a drawing to happen, is what I think. You know, I'm glad you brought that up because on Friday night, it was part of an artist talk and um, they asked me, um, not Friday night, Thursday night. What, what night? It was that Wednesday night. I'm getting my nights mixed up. Well, Wednesday night, it was part of an artist talk and we were. somebody had asked me, um, you used to be a painter for many years and now you do all this other stuff now. And, and I explained that um, I can come up with a concept, but maybe that medium isn't the best way to employ that concept. And so I have to like put my, you know, ego aside and say, okay, you have to try this because that's not the best way to employ that concept. And um, I find that that is logical instead of not necessarily always having to stay in one venue like the idea and, and I think all of us are sort of flexible in that way in which we work um, when I look at, at uh, Tatiana's work here of how it highlights current events and address social issues um, when I first thought of this work when we, when you showed it to me at the beginning there wasn't such a tack on mail and voting mm -hmm. and now there is and, and even in my mail and vote ballot I liked that there was a sticker in it <laughs> right like yes, I still get my sticker but I, you know I just was curious to you because of the current events and that aspect how has that changed this work or how you view this work yeah I think it definitely um yeah like I said because before I had I created it without even really thinking about it. Um, but yeah, I definitely see it differently. Um, just, I think with all the voices being put out there of the importance of voting, and then also the voices of that, that can't vote, um, I think it just kind of sinks in a little more than before, where it was just kind of like, ah, I'm just putting this out there. And, you know, it might sting a few people, it might not, whatever. But now it just, I think it just holds a little more. Um, like I said, it wasn't the, the, it wasn't the idea, but it's kind of turned into that. Um, it was, it, it's, so it's just kind of has a, um, a life of its own, I would say. Yeah, I think you bring up a great point because when we look at our works, right, in the past, and we're like, that's so, that's more relevant today. <laughs> or what yeah. the heck was I thinking, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I created this piece, Warning Worse Before Better, and I still believe that. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to be positive, but I think it's going to be a bumpy ride. <laughs> but yeah, I wanted to touch on um, Rebecca's art, um, because before I even met Rebecca, I actually was doing the tours at the Richmond Art Center. And a lot of the students would come there on field trips and I would guide the tours and they would just go to town on Rebecca's work. Like they would just giggle and they were just like, why is he, is that our president? And what is he doing? And it was just a lot of conversations around the pieces. But what I loved is it, we just let them, you know, I let them say whatever they wanted and, and just get it out. And, um, and it was, it was a, a nice conversation piece. <laughs> I thought it was great. That's because you're an artist and you would never kill a piece of art by talking over it for so long. You just let them do let what they need to do. I just love that you did that with any art, doesn't matter who. And of course, this would resonate with them because it's like a children's book illustration in a way. Right. But um, I'm glad you didn't talk 
about. Mm -mm. All the, no, no, none of the artists like to talk too much about the, wor the work yes. itself. Yeah. So when we're looking at this piece right here, um, and I, I put this image on the question, how can artists be supported now and into the future? Because <laughs> I felt like it, it uh, highlighted that in a way too. And if you want to sort of explain, um, I'm just interested in your perspective what can we do better? I mean, how can we, how can we sustain this during this economic downturn, which is going to happen, and really make sure people realize the value of, of art? God, that's a huge question, and I'm, I don't think I can talk very long, as I'm sure Tatiana also has uh, thoughts. But I think the first thought is helping artists write proposals because how can people know what we want if we can't articulate it? Yes. And that's hard because not, not, not everybody was trained to write in art school. Mm -hmm. So I think I mentioned Michelle before because I was very always very much in awe of everything she did to make that happen. Another thing that we can do is mentor other artists because other people out there, they don't really know what artists need, but we do. Yep. So we can help other people and not be selfish. I meet people that, that have so much knowledge and it would be great if they could share it. And I've tried to do that with younger artists when they have asked me. And for artists too, I think if we on social are more um, explicit about what it takes to create pieces, I think that people learn something from reading that. I've met some people who come to my shows who say, I remember when you were making this and you said, and now I understand. And I'm thinking, wow, what an impact. And I had no idea. So I've learned that for people to help artists, for patrons to buy, for clients to commission, for people to visit your show, you have to be more explicit about what is it that that um, makes you tick so that then they're more aware and they can make the moves that, that may help you. But um, a lot of us are really there's times when you really don't want to post anything or feel depressed about being an artist and doing work. But those are times too, to be honest. Um, so that was my revelation this month. <laughs> so <laughs> into that. It's a time to be honest because people don't know anything unless we, we share it. You have to share. I'll stop here. No, I think you're absolutely right. And, and I think the common thread is, of course, well, you know, Tatiana, I'm going to post your TEAT classes too. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I think, um, you know, I remember growing up and I, and I remember someone, individual saying to me, well, why would you ever want to teach and give up your secrets? Mm. I just, I was just like, so thrown aback when someone said that to me, because I feel like that's part of your legacy in giving back. And mm -hmm. I learned so much from my students. Sometimes I feel honored that I get to teach a class because I've learned so much from them. <laughs> and so I appreciate your background. And, and I know, Rebecca, you're teaching these classes coming up. Right, maybe you've already started some of them. Uh, the drawing, the basic, and the second part is starting. And this is all about how can artists be supported now into the future and is offering that platform to teach and having a place where you can do this and giving back. So I think, you know, you answered your question before by what you do. I think that's the older generation, the one that says, how can you give up your secrets? And that the younger artists now are so open in a way that I never dreamed was possible. And every day I'm encouraged and I feel 
pot, even though the world may be falling all around us, I still meet younger artists and I marvel at how far we've come and what they're doing today. And why wouldn't we help them? Why wouldn't we share what we know? I agree. I agree. And so when um, I look at Tatiana's work, and of course, you know, I've got your classes pulled up here. <laughs> um, I'm, you know, because you, you've been teaching for at what, at least five years, right? 10 years at this point? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, art. And then I started out as a preschool teacher and then, yeah, went into um, just mainly art uh, probably like six years ago. Yeah. So this transition from preschool to your art practice and then now teaching online, and this is, you know, how can artists be supported now into the future? Um, I think all three of us know how much longer it takes to prep stuff on an online Zoom format. Yeah. Um, and, and especially when you're teaching art where I can't really see something in person, that quality of the image and how you, that interaction is lost. And I'm curious about Tatiana, how do you feel supported now teaching and this process moving forward? Yeah, um, I think from the very beginning, what's interesting is the day every the world got shut down, <laughs> I was <laughs> I was supposed to teach a class to our first group of high schoolers at the art center, and we were like so excited. We had prepped. We were coming in for meetings. We were talking about what to say, how to say. You know, we we wanted more high schoolers, so we were very excited, and um, we were going to do printmaking and. And Michelle, she was actually going to help um, guide us. We couldn't, there, at that time, we were kind of transitioning through different artwork inside. So she was going to do like a public art. We were going to walk around and, and do that. And so we had it all planned. It was, it was going to be great. And then boom, <laughs> it got shut down. Everything got shut down. And it was just like, you know, the world stopped. And I'm thinking like, well, what about my class? <laughs> like, I was still thinking about those students and, um, yeah, you know, as the week went on, it was like, obviously that's not going to happen. Um, but right away I was getting emails like, you know what guys we're here for you. Um, it, there's funds that are being, you know, allotted in, in different ways. And, and right away we were getting, um, you know, information about grants and, and things that were, you know, being handed out. And, and then on social media, even with you, Jenny, like I was seeing so many different outlets that, um, yeah, because I, I felt like at that time, I'm like, well, I, I don't think this is, I don't think I should continue this. I should probably not, you know, I think I just got to, you know, hang my hat and, um, you know, focus on my kids because now I'm going to be homeschooling. <laughs> so um, I didn't really think there was going to be a place to continue teaching. I, I remember talking to my husband, like, I think this is it, you know, like, and he's like, well, maybe for a month, maybe for two. And I'm just like, yeah, we are, the idea of doing it on Zoom was not even a thought. Um, but then we started getting emails, Rebecca probably knows, um, like, um, I think it was like, maybe April, we were getting little emails, like we, we want to do a pilot summer class. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> like, I have no idea what we're, that's going to look like, but let's do it. And so I was always open to trying new things. And I think, um, a, a part of being supported is you have to be okay with being, you know, kind of the pioneer of everything and, and, and being okay with being flexible and, and rolling with it. Um, I think it, it could be hard to be supported if you just put your wall up and say like, no, I want it this way. And you have to be willing to change. And I think as artists uh, are just people that are artists in general, I think we're always adapting and overcoming, adapting and overcoming um, whether it's with our artwork or, you know, personal lives, things around us. And um, I think that was a huge test to me at, at being a teacher was if I'm really going to do this, I'm going to do it all the way. And I'm not just going to, oh, just do it in person. I have to push through this unique situation and, and still teach. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And, I, and I've been thinking, how is this going to, this is going to change the educational landscape. Um, at one of the institutions I teach at, 
some of the students are preferring online instead of having to pay BART, pay expensive mm -hmm. parking, pay for toll. Yep. And they have a family and other responsibilities to take care of. They know that they might lose some things in person, but you know, I think it's going to take time to even readjust to mm -hmm. when you can have quote unquote back normal right. events. And um, as I like what you said about artists and or educators also having to reinvent themselves. I think about that like each class you teach and how you're always yeah. thinking, okay, this is out of date or this is new and I'm adding it. Mm -hmm. I don't, I've never met a teacher that used the same syllabus for 20 years. You know what I mean? yeah. <laughs> that just doesn't happen. So I think mm -hmm. um, how can artists be, you know, supported and, keep giving us these teaching jobs, keep giving us, you know, let be flexible, be innovative on how we can still, you know, teach art and show our art practice and support us that way. Um, I think if, if you don't, um, you know, transform or transition, you are going to be left behind. And all three of us, I think have done that in our art practices too. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, of course, I'm going to always say, keep us giving us money and keep us giving us opportunities and pushing forward with that. Um, you will always check on me when on my last breath. I'm going to be fighting for that. <laughs> um, yeah. How can they be supported? I believe also in free spirit, speech, right? And not being being able to do our work and part of that is a healthy democracy to be able to do that work um, so I just want to say this has been an absolutely fabulous talk and look at I'm with the three educators and we like got done right on time Woo! <laughs> right because I'm with Tatiana and Rebecca um, I just want to say that it's been just a real pleasure talking to both of you and taking the time, but really sharing the insights between your whole life, your whole creative life that you live in. Um, I don't think this is going to be the last that I'm going to be doing a curation that focuses on um, Richmond artists. I always have a soft spot here in Richmond just because I feel like there's such incredible works that are happening here but I want to see this still happening in five, 10, 20 years from now. You know, I don't want these events to destroy everything. So um, I'll be posting this video online and Tatiana, would you like to say any final words tonight? Um, I think my final words are, if you have children, sign them up for our classes or teens or adults. <laughs> We are, uh, I'm sure Rebecca's are already sold out though. <laughs> Last time I seen they were sold out. Um, and yeah, just keep supporting. Just keep, um, keep the arts going. Yeah, that's it. And Rebecca, would you like to close us out? Absolutely. I would say, I would like to say those who know teach. You know how they say that. If you can't, you teach. Well, that's not true. Mm -hmm. the people know they teach. So yes, do what Tatiana says. Enroll your kids in classes. Enroll yourself in classes. I think the, the drawing class is popular not because people know me so much as because people are looking for something that they can learn that doesn't take a lot of materials and that's calming and centering and that certainly can be drawing. So look for a class that you like and enroll your kids and enroll yourself. Yep. Take a risk. Yes. You're gonna enjoy it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you for the people who have joined this discussion and onwards and upwards and we're gonna keep on fighting. Woohoo! <laughs>